Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 1st of August. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. A couple of new videos this week. So Azure Firewall Premium went GA. So I've been waiting to create this content. So it's like an 85 minute deep dive into Azure Firewall both the standard features and the premium features. And I have a whole set of demos, especially around all of those new premium capabilities. And then I did a more high level video, really what is Azure? Really how I would explain it, how I think about it compared to kind of on premises and then obviously those cloud services. So that may help out if you're getting started. I also created a new playlist if I was getting started with Azure it's about six hours of content, eight of my videos that I think are kind of that core learning material. On to what's new this week. So on the compute side, really for the Azure VMware solution, remember, this is actually VMware running in Microsoft data centers. The whole point here is that if I have existing VMware deployments, I don't have to retour, I don't have to relearn. I can basically just migrate those into Azure and then through ExpressRoute, those VMware-based deployments can still actually get to other Azure services. And then through ExpressRoute Global Reach could actually go and be connected to from on-premises, et cetera. So the VMware Site Recovery Manager, the SRM, that is the VMware Disaster Recovery Solution. It helps me do planning, it helps me perform failover and fail back. So now that Azure VMware solution can be part of that for both the planning and actually failing over to, failing over from, fail back, et cetera. That's now just gonna work as part of Site Recovery Manager. Then on the networking side, they actually added three new ExpressRoute peering locations. So if we remember what is a peering location. So we hear this kind of called uh, meet me as well. Remember, the whole point here is we have this massive Microsoft backbone network. Now, on that backbone network are lots of different things, kind of all the Azure regions connect to it. There's all those various points of presence where maybe they go and connect to various internet service providers at carrier neutral facilities. But also, at some of these, these are peering location or meet me's. So this is where I could have my location and then I can drop in connectivity and they are then basically cross connected. So I'm now connected to that Microsoft backbone. I can then do private peering to connect to a particular virtual networks or Microsoft peering to get advertised over that connection, various Azure PaaS services, maybe even Microsoft 365. So the meet me I pick is really important because obviously I have a physical location and the meet me is a physical location where I'm dropping that cable and connected to that backbone network. And then there are regions typically close to that meet me. So it's all about reducing the latency. So by adding new peering locations, these meet me's, it gives more opportunity now for me to maybe connect closer to my data centers and also maybe get closer to certain regions I actually want to use. So if we actually go and look at the peering locations we now have available, so this site kind of goes through and adds all of these. It has this whole great big list and basically we can see here, now we have this Campinas uh, added in Brazil South. We have a Dublin 2 has been added, obviously that's North Europe. And then also there is a Sao, Sao Paulo 2 in Brazil South as well. So three new Meet Me locations I can actually use um, to get connected to that Microsoft Backbone Network. Next on the storage side, a preview feature but now I can have immutable storage for blob versions. So remember, immutable storage is all about either using a time-based or legal hold on blob storage. 
So maybe I, I can't delete it, I can't modify it, maybe I can still go and create new content, for example. So what I can now do is for a specific version of a blob or all past and current versions of blob, I can apply either that time-based or legal hold on that. And I can still do container-based as well. It's only in a couple of regions right now, I think it might be France and Canada, um, but that is now preview, giving me that version specific capability uh, for blob. Then a whole bunch of miscellaneous things. So firstly, uh, this is kind of just a cool thing. So I was playing around and I kind of discovered this map. So this is this Azure infrastructure map and it kind of shows me all of these different things around Azure. And I, I can kind of change the filter. So right now, if I look at the filter, it's showing me kind of regions, edge zones, network pops, kind of those things I was talking about, about that network. Let me actually just give you just that view. You can see all these kind of lines and connections that are Azure, but I could change it to maybe, hey, I don't want to see network pops and edge zones or ground stations or sustainability. It's just showing me the regions now. And I can kind of select one of these to see the detail about it, as you can kind of see here. I can still, if you look at the bottom left corner, there's still kind of the old map style view I can click or I can go back to that nice kind of global view. But I just thought that was kind of fun. So I did want to kind of call that out. Azure Relay has added Azure Active Directory support. Now Azure Relay is actually used by a number of services. Um, for example, app service plans use this to get that hybrid connectivity if I want my app service plan to be able to reach in and talk to things on premises, for example. So what it's actually doing, I have a service running on premises that establishes an outbound connection to the Azure Relay service that then allows a bi-directional socket to be created and then clients talk to the Azure Relay service out there in the public internet and then through that established socket, it can go and talk to those back-end services on my network. Now previously it used shared access signatures as really the way to control that access. But now I can actually use Azure AD role-based access control, so I have a lot more granularity about that. Um, Azure Virtual Desktop is now available in the China Sovereign Cloud. So remember, we always think about kind of the Azure Commercial Cloud, what most of us will use, but there are Sovereign Clouds as well. There's ones for like US Gov, um, there's the German Sovereign Cloud, and there's the China uh, Sovereign Cloud. So now Azure Virtual Desktop is available in preview in that China cloud. Start VM, again on Azure Virtual Desktop, has now gone GA. Now this is for both pooled, I have a whole bunch of virtual desktops that I'll just connect to one of them, whichever one is available, or personal where I have a dedicated desktop just for me. Now, that start VM on connect is available for both of those. So if it's personal when it's turned off, it will start it when I connect my particular desktop. If it's pulled, it will start a new desktop if there are none available already running. So that is now a GA feature. And the Azure Site Recovery Update 56 went GA. This is really two changes. One, there was a performance improvement, I think it was 46%, when you enable replication, um, re-protect um, existing assets. And also now you can enable replication between any two Azure regions, not just two regions in the same continent. So that was a change in the portal management. And that was it, uh, a fairly quick week of updates. As always, any comments about this content, please post below. And until next week, take care.